Hello and welcome to this edition of Fish Beats Fly Box. Uh, today I'm going to demonstrate a fly that um, I like. It's kind of it's a cross between a Copper John and a, a San Juan worm. I call it the Copper Juan worm. And uh, so anyway, here we go. I've got a, what I got in the vise is a B is a Gamagatsu B10S. It's a size 10, and I got an eighth inch bead sitting on it. I'm going to push the bead back to the back of the fly. And I'm going to take and wrap a few wraps of this fluorescent pink UTC, UTC 140 thread. And now I'm going to take um, a piece of squirming material. This is kind of a squirmy wormy, and you can do it with chenille too. Um, but I'm going to take a piece of this squirming material. I'm going to go ahead and tie that in. What I like to do is I like to, when I do it, I'll roll it over to the bottom of the fly and I'll put a couple of lighter wraps, about three of them, and then I'll hold it and I'll cinch down on it until it rolls to the top of the fly. And then I'll bring and wrap the threads, thread wraps, back around it. I'll get it down. And then I'm going to take, and I will cut this out of the way. And I know it's secured. And I like to make this about an, uh, one and a half to two shank lengths long. So I'll fold it back. Give me one. It's be right about there. Okay. And then I'm going to take and bring this thread and wrap it so I can hold it down at the head of the at the head of the fly. And the thing with this straight edge straight eye hook you don't want to go too far close too close to the eye because you will crowd the hook eye when you're trying to put a uh, leader tire leader to it or whatever there you go and then I'm gonna take it and keep wrapping that around the problem with this squirmy material is that when you're tying with it the tighter you tie the more it wants to turn over the hook so you got to find the, the right balance to keep it secured, but not over tighten it so it turns around over the hook like that. And I'll just keep playing with it until I get it to where I want it. And then I'm going to grab my whip finish. And then we'll whip finish this portion of the fly. You can put cement on that or whatever. I, I find that cement doesn't really hold the fly, the squirmy to the hook, but it might help keep the thread wraps on the squirmy material. Um, so, and then I'm going to take the bead and we're going to bring that up. And you might have to fish it a little bit to get it where you want it. that work. And then I'm going to take some lead wire. And we're going to tie a dozen wraps of lead wire around the hook shank. shove it up there as far as we can. It's not going to go all the way up in the hook eye because that scoring material is underneath there. And then we'll take the thread and we will wrap it around the hook shank behind the lead and wrap it almost to bend the hook and cut the, cut the tag into that off. And then just be on the bend. And then we're going to take some pink scoring material. Now you don't have to do it in this color combination obviously. You can do it in whatever color combinations you want. Um, but I prefer to do it in a, a dual color with this version of it. And I'm going to take and bring this to the back behind the bead, or behind the lead wire. And I'm going to, again, I'm going to put that at the bottom, do a couple, three wraps. We'll, pull, we'll pinch it to hold it down at the bottom, pull it tight, and then we'll let it roll to the top of the fly. And as we tie it down, It'll continue to roll to the top. 
And I'm going to take, I'm going to pinch that little small end and cut it. And this again, about one and a half to two hook, hook shank lengths. Trim it. Now, if this squaring material is on the near side of the hook, a little more on the near side of the hook, that's okay. So you still got to wrap a red. Excuse me, you still got to wrap wire around it. Um, copper wire. We use red ultra wire, and we're gonna tie that in at the bottom of the shank. And wrap. Tie that down until we get to that bend there. And if you don't go all the way back, it's fine. It's probably better to not necessarily go all the way back to where you, that squirmy ends. The squirmy material ends there. I've got the copper wiring right about a little bit further up from that. And then I'm going to build a small taper here. Flatten my thread out. And build a taper. That's what's nice about sometimes using UTC 140 for these copper jobs, at least for this part. So when you build that taper, it doesn't take as long to, to build it. Just flatten it out and go. And that UTC 70 can take a little bit of time. And now I'm going to take and wrap the copper wire around the hook shank, just like you do a copper john. And I'll hold it a little bit towards the back of the fly to keep those edges tight touching. And again, the harder you pull on this, the more likely that squirmy material is going to curve over the hook. So you got to find a good balance where you're still getting enough tension to keep everything in place, but you're not. Um, twisting that squirmy material around the hook shank too much. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and wrap that back. I'm going to tie that copper wire off. Now the copper, copper, copper wire breaks off. And now I'm going to tie in some uh, wing case material. And what I'm going to use typically. Um, on a copper john, use some sort of mirage tinsel or hollow tinsel or something to that effect for the top of the wing case. Um, here's a material that I came across at the Wasatch Fly Tying Expo. It's called Atomic Glow, and it actually glows in the dark. You put it in the UV and um, or just light in general, and you take it some, take it deep water, and it, it glows. It glows well. So that's what I'm going to use for the the. Uh, it's rather than tinsel, I'm going to use this Atomic Glow. We will take and wrap that in. Where that's at. Just directly on top of the hook shank. And then we're going to take some thin skin. And this is about 3 sixteenths of an inch wide. Um, it's about the same gap as the gap width of a size 12 52, UTMC 5262. And then I'm going to take and tie that in. Wrap that back. And that's what too far. It's about there. And now I'm going to take some UV dubbing. And for this particular fly, I use either UV red or UV pink. Um, for this one, I'm tying. I'm going to use UV red. And we'll build a thorax.
Now I got that good and, <coughs> good and dubbed. I will take and wrap, <coughs> pull my thin skin over. Trying to keep it square or on top of the fly. And I'm going to twist that up so it's rope like. And then crank down on it. A couple wraps. Bring a couple racks, wraps. One of the disadvantages of keeping using one team's, uh, excuse me, this 140 thread is you gotta watch for bulk. And so you gotta really cut back on your wraps when you're tightening stuff in because it'll bulk up really fast. Okay, and now I'm gonna take this Atomic Glow, bring it over. Sitting, so I'm going to adjust it a little bit. And then we'll bring again, cautious of the number of wraps we're using. Okay, and at this point, I am going to take my whip finish, and I'm not going to do a huge head on this right just yet. I'll use the whip finish to do the head. Um, again, watching for bulk on that head, that thread head. Okay. Go ahead and cut the thread. And now I'll use some UV glue. Um, I've got clear cure glue thick. Apparently they're not really in business anymore. You, probably, you can still find it. Um, but if you uh, use this clear cure glue thick or some sort of your favorite clear cure glue, or your UV glue, and then I'm going to use a bodkin to put that exactly where I want it. That's a little too much. Spread it out all over the wing case. Okay. And now I'm going to use the UV light to Get that first coat dried. I'll check it. Uh, I'm going to use some more uh, Kirikugu Hydro. It felt a little sticky. It's not too bad. But batteries must be dying on it. Just touch it up. Just blast it with the light again. And then, there it is. Actually, I'm going to take a, one more step. I'm going to take the Velcro. I'm going to brush these, this dummy out a little bit for the legs. Which, worms don't have legs, but I think it kind of looks cool. Okay. And... There it is, the Copper Wand Worm, the Squirmy version. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed this uh, demonstration from Fishbase Flybox. Please remember to like Fishbase Flybox on Facebook, subscribe to Lance Dean's YouTube channel, and to stay up to date with Fishbase Flybox. We're going to fishbaseflybox.com and going to subscribe. Thank you and have a nice day.